You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time to kick off our broadcast week here on the Options Insider Radio Network with the one, the only... The old OB, a.k.a. the option block. Yes, my name is Mark Longo. I will be your host, your guide, your major D through quite a bit of this week's programming, including this fine programming. If you like what you hear, of course, not just for this show, but for the full network, make sure leave a review, leave a comment on your platform of choice so that newcomers can continue to discover and indeed enjoy the network. Of course, keep those questions coming, too. We do love to hear from you guys you know we've been kicking it off didn't do it last week because we were off last week so it's been a little bit but we have been kicking off our broadcast week the last month or so with a little bit of fun look back get the blood pumping a little bit of get the engines revving with some fun shall we say 80s themed musical trivia so we're going to keep that going today since we haven't done it a little bit we'll make it an easy one a fun one gonna be a bit of an airworm though i warn you ahead of time all right here we go three two one I do love it when a plan comes together. All right, that one's going to be my head now for the rest of the day. But, you know, there are worse things (laughs) to have in your head than the A-team. Oh, I just said the name. But, you know, what? it says it in the intro. So it's kind of an easy one. Let's make it official. First, let's go out to the rockingest of lobsters. I do believe it is the options pit turn at bat. Mr. Rock Lobster, a.k.a. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Welcome to the program A and B. Can you possibly guess what program that is from, sir? Uh... You know what? I would love to guess what it was, but I cannot hear any of what you play. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I guess you lose then. So let's see instead. So, there's a lot of there's a lot of choices out there. So I'm afraid <laughs> that I have like a one in a ten thousand chance of hitting the right eighties program. Oh, well then let's see if Uncle Mike can get the answer correctly. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. I put it to you, of course, Uncle Mike Tusaw from St. Charles. Wealth management. I'll give you a hint. You do love it when a plan comes together, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. A, welcome to the program. B, any chance of guessing this one, sir? Well, you're making it really tough, but uh, I'm going to go with the A team. I even, I, I, I know the A team. I remember there was an episode when William Perry was on, when Hulk Hogan was on. Uh, the A team was the 80s, and uh, it was a great show. And uh, hopefully, when I, whenever I go hunting, my aim is better than uh the bad guys or anybody when they shoot in the a-team <laughs> that's my thoughts on the a-team <laughs> that's true they, they had how many seasons of that show and i think i think one i think ba got hit like once and that was about it no one else got hit let alone 
thousands of bullets going off every episode. Yes, you're right. A team was the 80s. It kind of personifies it. And we kind of personify the options market this day. Let's get rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Let's see if the market likes it when a plan comes together. Apparently, they do, particularly when that plan is maybe on the virus side. Coming into today's show, we're seeing yet another day that ends in Y and a rally on the street. Most of the major indices firmly in the green. The S&P, once again, the Goldilocks, as it is wont to be these days, up about 1.5%. Uh, the Dow up about one and a third percent, and the Nasdaq up about one and three quarters percent. So pretty much the breakdown, pretty much as you would expect uh, for an upside day out there. Let's see what's going on with our old friend Bix Cash. Come into Showtime. It was at about a twenty-five and three quarters or so. That puts it down about three and a quarter. Now it's down to about twenty-five and a half. So almost three and a half points. From our last show. So quite a bit of erosion kicking in on the old Bix front there. Our old friend V Bix, aka the volatility of volatility at about one ten and a half down. Oh, almost ten handles, about nine and a half handles. So it was at about exactly one twenty on our last show. And that's of course our barometer for VIX volatility. But hey, as we said recently on the show, that barometer maybe needs to be adjusted for the COVID regime. Then we've got VXX at about a nice firm 25 out there, down two handles pretty much exactly from last show. What's causing all this just jubilance on the street out there today? Well, you know, you know me, more buyers than sellers is the, is the hardcore answer. But it seems like AstraZeneca is resuming their vaccine trials. Remember, they infamously paused them because one of the recipients had a strange illness that they couldn't really... Uh, couldn't really come to terms with, so they paused it out of an abundance of caution. It's like they're resuming that, so that's clearly a good sign. They're not as worried about uh, the impact of that. Also, Pfizer said over the weekend that they believe their their trials, they should know if their drug is, or should say their vaccine is effective by the end of October, and if that's the case, it could be in our hot little hands in the U.S. here by the end of the year. So all that seems like it's combining for a little bit of green on the street, but then again, you know, it's a day that ends in why you never know. Also, uh, TikTok, apparently that TikTok dance. I was just pontificating last week about how it seemed like strange that the Oracle straddle wasn't pricing in any TikTok juice. And that certainly seems to be the case now because it does seem like Oracle going to be the winner in that TikTok dance after Microsoft said their bid was rejected. So a lot to parse here on the program. Let's go back around the horn. Let's start because he got it right. He wins. Let's go to the rockingest of lobsters. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, awesome. let's go to the uncleist of Mike's. He got it right. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what is lighting up your tape today? Well, I'm just getting kind of fired up on the A-team right now. I'm ready to I knew go it. out and See, uh, I told you. Get your pump for the week. Else. Very much, very much. <laughs> Nothing better than uh, pity in the f- I pity the fool that's on the wrong side of this market. Um, uh, but nonetheless, just kind of looking through things. Um, yeah, it does seem like we're there. The, the only real news that's out right now does seem to be the hint of optimism on the COVID testing. Um, you know, whether I'm, I'm not convinced we're going to have a vaccine that is like the foolproof end all be all vaccine uh, by in, in a month or two months or whatever, po- politics aside. Now, are we going to have something, the next big thing, so to speak, that's going to claim it is? Yes, I think something's going to come out there. Um, November 3rd is my prediction date on that, but that's another story. Um, Or maybe a little bit before that. There'll be the Republican vaccine and the Democrat vaccine. The Republican one will come out like October 25th. The Democrat one will come out November 3rd. That's uh, kind of my prediction on the vaccine. But with it, um, the problem with the vaccines is that even flu vaccines, we don't get right every year, meaning whenever you do a vaccine for flu shots every year, um, it's, it's, you have to have predictive models of how the virus is going to be. So even if we have a vaccine, it's not really going to be like a, like a polio vaccine or a chicken pox vaccine <laughs> or something like that to where um, you're in theory, I mean, nothing's ever foolproof, but it's not going to be like that. It's going to be like the flu vaccine to where hopefully they predicted the strand of the virus right and it'll work so with it i'm not um convinced that that's going to be there now of course the good news is is that and, and of course there's always good news um is that 
are death rates. Uh, most of the death rates are typically with people who have higher risks uh, anyway, not, not anyway, but people that are more uh, susceptible to uh, older people, people that are obese, people that have uh, asthma issues and things like that. Uh, not that that's good, but what is good is that we know a little bit more about how to treat the disease, a lot more about how to treat the disease than we did six months ago. So that's a good thing uh, from that standpoint. And so I think ultimately that side of it, the fact that we'll have some type of vaccine and the fact that our medical community knows a lot more now than they did six months ago, that's the good news that I'm seeing. Um, and we are functioning more as a society with people going out and uh, people doing stuff. So with that, um, I think that uh, it's important to understand that whether we have a new normal or no new normal, um, I think in time we're going to have the old normal back. Uh, it's just that now we've added a disease that uh, our medical community has stepped up and done a great job with learning how to treat it so far. And uh, we're just not there yet to the, to the end of it. So that's kind of where uh, what I'm seeing right now from the standpoint of COVID. Um, in terms of the market, uh, we're still right around that 3,400 mark with the SPX, or <clears throat> we're kind of hovering around that. We did go over it for a little bit today, but we're at 3,388 right now as I'm looking at my screen. Uh, so we have that. And uh, we still have a ways to go from the all-time highs, but we are starting to bounce back a little bit from the pullback. We were a little bit lower last week, so so far it's a great start to the week for those of us bulls out there, and uh, markets appear to be holding. Important thing to point out, though, uh, is once again that this has been a gap-up kind of market in that the close of um, Friday's market, we gapped up a lot of these points uh, overnight. Uh, so I believe the high last night, we're close to the high last night uh, in the Sunday night market. So a lot of this was happening in the overnight market. So what that tells me is that there's really not any news that's coming out today, so to speak, <clears throat> uh, that could be driving up this market. I think a lot of it was based on uh, news releases last night of uh, what's going on with COVID and things like that, or at least anticipation for it. So that's what I'm seeing right now, and uh, I will toss it over to Andrew. Wow, is he allowed to just toss it to me without you putting some umbrageable comment in in between? I will allow it just this once, but only just this once. Because, because you know why he <laughs> hey, has the power? I, I, because he got the A team right. I, you know what I, I was, I, I was, I was pretty. Uh, I was like waiting for the music. Okay, there's got to be some music coming. I know it's coming, and then unfortunately, unfortunately my mind went blank and. I showed my age and totally disintegrated under the under the uh, the maelstrom of questioning from uh, the benevolent dictator <laughs> yes. of the option option inside. Quite radio the maelstrom network. of questioning. Can you name that tune? <laughs> <laughs> from the and, and, <laughs> Andrew, I just did a direct snap to you right away. We didn't need to, to snap it to the quarterback. We just did a direct snap to the running back right there. That's how like, we roll. Like, oh, and I think speaking of that, I think that's why the market's up. There was football. There you go. And I, and I was like waiting for you to mention. I'm like, I can't believe Tucson's not going to mention there's football and life is back to normal. But um, we don't have we do not have all of college football back. So until we have that, you know, the, the, those guys, that those overpaid bums that play on Sunday, I don't care about them. I just want football is a game for the I mean, don't get me wrong. I love NFL football, but the priority of what we need in America right now is college football. That is the spirit of what embodies everything that makes America great. That's what we need right now, more so than the high paid guys. I and I, I, I agree with you. I do like uh, I, uh, I do like college football. I'll, I'll watch that every once in a while, uh, maybe once or twice a year. So that's that's a lot. Um, uh, but it, as far as, um, uh, what's going on, I, so I tweeted a, a couple things out, the ball man tweeted a couple things out, um, last week and, you know, so a lot of things with ball is expectation, um, uh, like where they can go, where can we go? Um, and from uh, looking at uh, VIX, the low for the cycle for the COVID cycle, I think, is like 22-ish, 21 and a half. And every time we hit that number, we kind of bounce off it. Um, 
at least we have several times uh, since, uh, let's call it late February. Um, and right now we have this crazy premium for the election. I think um, like it doesn't feel like the COVID news is getting worse. So it's, it's mostly just like it's not going away. I think people are kind of dealing. I think different people are diff dealing with it differently, um, which is why I think it's kind of hanging out uh, a little longer than everybody wants. But mostly looking at Paul, okay, we have indexes up, VIX down on a Monday. And usually there's weekend that comes back in. Didn't happen this time. So we actually have a real drop in Paul. So whatever caused that QQQ sell-off, um, I don't know if it's over, but at least it appears to have subsided substantially. And that doesn't mean people aren't getting back in, but those stocks did not race all the way back to their all-time highs immediately. Um, Amazon is still quite a bit off its uh, all-time high. Um, I think at least 10%. Um, uh, Apple as well. So you have like a, a, a little, let's just call it, there's a little bit of, um, oh yeah, at least 10% off. So there, there took some bloom off the rose. I don't, again, everybody's saying it was SoftBank because they just, you know, bought up a bunch of calls. But I, I think at least in the short term, you know, maybe some a normalcy, which I think will be a little rotation, sort of out of tech into maybe some of the other stocks that exist, like uh, like all of the Russell, <laughs> most of the S&P 500, and most of the Dow, basically, uh, that are still like not that are substantially down for the year. Um, so I think that kind of rotation ultimately will be healthy. It depends on how fast people get out of uh, techs or start to reduce some tech, but we'll see. So right now we just, we have kind of what I'd say, market up, ball down, which is uh, generally kind of, which is generally bullish. Um, and uh, I don't know if we're gonna, I think the next thing, the big wild card is the election. And actually I think, the bigger wild card is what's going to happen between November 3rd and the 17th, like two weeks after, um, like I, everybody's probably getting the stuff in the mail from the post office. Right. I, I got one uh, in the middle of nowhere, Maine. So they, they can get to me, they can get to you. It says, Hey, if you're going to do a mail in ballot, here's how the post office works. Don't wait till the last minute to send it in, send it in. So it has plenty of time. Um, <laughs> so uh, the post office is saying this to people. Um, and then another thing you notice is there's all these fights in states about how late a ballot can be counted till the very last minute. And it can be sent until eight o'clock on election day and all this. And it doesn't need a timestamp or a postmark or like, like an amazing amount of funky stuff going on two months before the election. Um, as far as like, changing current election law to make it new. So uh, I don't really know why that's necessary, but I think that's also a thing keeping the ball um, higher and keeping that October future higher. So if you really want to get a, a beat on what people think, the easiest thing to watch is the October future and how far above uh, the cash it stays. It's only $4.62. It was as much as $9 over two weeks ago prior to that um, explosion of NASDAQ. So this, there's still election premium there. There's still considerable uncertainty there. Um, and apparently the big, huge bid for premium was all related to the queues and how those things were totally taken off. So, which as an ex-market maker and uh, Longo can figure this out, you know, when you run out of calls to sell, ball goes higher. Um, and uh, he's probably felt that viscerally like we all have. So that's what we have uh, from this point of view. But it, it does look like things are subsiding somewhat. Uh, and we are seeing lower vol uh, in the October cycle. So remember, VIX is looking at, you know, what's expiring a month from now, which is about the middle of October. Um, and by the time we get to September expiration, it will be uh, the October SPX it's looking at. So again, very interesting type of pricing. I still think the no will be bid because I don't, you know, I think the COVID seems to be getting better pretty much on a monthly basis, right? You know, there's a shock for some cases and then it all kind of subsides. Um, so, on, you know, in month blocks, COVID seems to be getting better. It doesn't really seem to be getting worse. 
but the election thing is still sitting there. So the market, when it has a date, it's basically going to act like a giant earnings cycle. And that's what we have. It's like the election is a giant earnings cycle um, where the straddle in November will probably hold its price or decay very lightly, uh, which means the IV has to go up to counteract that. And, um, and that's what we'll see uh, till the election. So I think that unless there is a massive change in something, which I think is always possible, we kind of we're going to see a lot of this sort of, you know, market up and down, not quite getting back to highs unless we do get some pretty fantastic news. Although there is the Chinese vaccine cure vaccine and there's the Russian vaccine. So I just figure, you know, with those two vac vaccines, everybody should be in euphoria land right now. But I, I guess I guess it's not translating uh across either the Pacific or the Atlantic quite yet. I guess not guess indeed, not. sir. All right, let's move on out to what we've got going on here in terms of the market. I just want to make sure, let's look really quickly, because you were saying you heard me a little bit different there. You know what? <laughs> there we go. How's that? Does that sound better, Mr. Rock Lobster? A little better, better. Yeah, that's how you Much weren't better. hearing. You know it what? Does. Ah, there we go. You know Let's just say folks were using this system for other things. <laughs> and that uh, sometimes hijacks the settings here. All right, there we go. I was wondering why you guys couldn't hear that sweet, sweet A-team music. But now we're back and ready to roll here, listeners. Let's keep on rolling out into what's lighting up the tape on the individual major indices first. Let's go out to VIX land. VIX at about exactly a quarter of a million contracts as of a few minutes ago, the ADB. Just a notch over 400K out there. Spy at almost 2 million, about 1.91 million contracts. As of a few minutes ago, the ADB 4.11 out there, a little 411 in Spy land. Yes, 615,000 contracts. The ADB also a notch over a million out there as well, 1.11 out there as well. The Q's closing in on 600K, the ADB almost 1.5 million, and the Russell 2000, at least the IWM flavor, at about a little bit north of a quarter million. 268,000 contracts, the ADB 400K exactly out there in IWM right now. Let's move on out to what is the most active, top 10 most active hot options out there right now. You can probably guess two of them. <laughs> Just a question of which order they're in. Number 10, AMD, 201,000 contracts. Number nine, the old Facebook, 208,000 contracts. It cost you 200K to break into the top 10 today. That's a decently robust day. Number eight, Microsoft, 230. I guess they're feeling the tailwind now after having gotten kicked to the curb in their wooing of TikTok. Number seven, NVIDIA, 254,000. They may pick up ARM, which is kind of interesting. ARM kind of does a lot of the research and design for a lot of the chips that power a lot of the devices you use out there. So that's an interesting one, NVIDIA, maybe positioning to be even more of a power player in the computing space going forward. Number six, this looks like a, a newcomer to the top 10, not one we've seen before. This is APA, at least not for a while. This is Apache, 261,000 contracts out there. They are hydrocarbon exploration. They've been on the odd block in the past, I do believe, but not in the top 10, at least not in quite some time that I can recall. So interesting, Apache on the move out there, 261,000. Number five, DraftKings. I believe they have some deal going on with ESPN All right now. So that's pumping them up to about 262,000 contracts. Number four, Oracle. 264 out there. Number three, Nikola. They, as of the other, not Tesla, but still Tesla-related naming convention, electric vehicle manufacturer, 377,000 contracts. <laughs> the Tesla branding, just I can't believe that everyone's still going to that. But hey, say lovey. I digress. Number two, of course, Tesla, H12 out there. Got a great hot pole lighting it up with you folks out there right now on Tesla options. We'll get to that in a second. And number one with the bull, that means if it's not Tesla, or for Tesla, by the way, 812, in case I didn't say it earlier, Apple, number one with the bullet out there, almost 1.2 million contracts, 1.17. Yet another day that ends in Y, Tesla and Apple. This split, <laughs> it's amazing. Other companies aren't just diving into the well, announcing splits left, right, and center because these splits have just lit the, lit the roof on fire for both of these names, and they haven't really stopped since the split. So a lot of hot stuff out there. Looking at hot stuff on the earnings front, not a ton. We've got Lenner. I believe they're an optics uh, company out there on Monday. Cracker Barrel and FedEx and Adobe 
on Tuesday. And uh, that's kind of it, unless you like Oak Street Health <laughs> on Wednesday. Uh, so not a lot of big names, but the ones that are out there, we do have the reports for over there, theoptionsider.com, as well as all the previous names. We have their earnings move and earnings move results reports. And, of course, the earnings season report, the ever-important earnings season report. Let's look really quickly here. Leslie Leonard, they're popping off after the bell today. They're at 77 and a half. They're about almost five bucks in their straddle, 486. In the past, they've moved $2.96. So that that formula hasn't been a winner so far <laughs> for pretty much the entirety of the earnings season. Let's see. Maybe Leonard can buck the trend. Then we've got Cracker Barrel out there. Kind of Hard to do a lot of eating in a Cracker Barrel these days. Maybe they have a booming to-go business. I guess we'll find out. Cracker Barrel was at one thirty six seventy nine coming into this, into this report. They're pricing in nearly nine bucks, eight ninety one. In the past, they've moved four dollars and fifty cents exactly. So, a little bit of juice in the Cracker Barrel space. That's kind of interesting. Again. That cycle hasn't paid off, but we shall see. And then we got Adobe out there. They make all, a lot of the cloud software you guys use and Photoshop, all that good stuff. A 471.35. They could probably use a split, get a little bit of that Microsoft, or I should say that Apple and Tesla bump there. Straddle, $29.64. Pretty rich. In the past, they moved 21.39. So extremely rich. So wow, three names popping off to show and pricing in, I should say. A heck of a lot more vol than they have moved in the past, which is surprising for an end of a season that is, I think, to borrow Matt's phrase, blood red for the premium buyers. Overall, right now, the average for the season is at a whopping 74%. So that means of all the vol that was priced in throughout all the names this season, we've seen uh, delivered about 74% of that in terms of net movement out there. So not exactly a winner. For. There hasn't been a single week yet where premium buyers have net made money on the on the average out there. Let's see if that's going to be the case with these names, or also let's see what's going to be the case with some of the names that our eye of Sauron found for us. Let's see what the heck those are as we head on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody. Let's get the ball rolling here. Let's see what our eye of Sauron found. By the way, I think I said Leonard was a optic. That's Gunner. Gunner Optics, I do believe. Leonard is the home builder. So <laughs> similar name. I don't think I don't think uh, the Gunner Optics are public, but that'd be interesting to see. A little bit of uh, very tech focused optics out there. But let's find what our tech focused eye of Sauron has focused on out there today. First up, this is uh, one we talked about in the past. It's been a little bit since we've come back to them. They of the cough variety, C-O-F, a.k.a. Capital One Financial. Trading right now, $74.82. Good day for them. Up $3.74. So nice little bump for Capital One out there today. Let's look here really quickly. It's not earnings day out there for them, so something's driving this paper. Uh, our friends in Orats found this one as well. They put Cough in their fourth place for today's volume versus their 20-day average. They're at about almost two and a half times that average right now. As of this report, there was about 18,000 contracts on the tape. The normal volume is about 7,700 out there. Calls leading the ship. They puts leading the dance pretty aggressively. About 12,000 puts, only about 5,800 calls let's see what our eye of sauron found out here well before we get to that let's let's break down the year that has been out here in cough a year ago was trading well north of where it is right now even with today's rally it was trading 94.37 so almost exactly 20 bucks north of where it is right now it topped out right before the great madness at 104.14 that was on february 19th we all know what followed from there the great sell-off it got down to 38 dollars I think the technical term for that is dang. So 104 and <laughs> change down to $38. And like a lot of names, it had a lot of peaks and troughs after that. Got up to almost 60 again by March 26, then sold off again to third 42 again by April 3rd, back up to 
60 bucks pretty much even on april 9th and then back down to the low 50s like 50 exactly again all did that a few times and then it topped out again you'll never guess when it topped out listeners oh yeah 80 bucks even on june 8th 80 even and it pretty much hasn't looked back from those levels since it sold off down to 60 again on july 10th so took a nice little drubbing it's been slowly fighting its way back we're up to almost five bucks away from that june 8th high but he had another name in our pantheon of second tier names outside of what did mr rock to say earlier the universe of anything else outside of tech <laughs> seems to have plateaued on that june 8th level and has been struggling to reclaim those highs our eye of sauron out here today let's see what it found it found some puts in particular the sep 65 puts lighting it up to the tune of 10,676 going up pretty much through the bid the bid was 14 cents he's went up for almost 12 cents 11 dollar 11.8 cents <laughs> out there so they were 14 cents at 18 they went up for 11.8 cents this wasn't late this was just a pretty aggressive print out here let's see there are earnings there on the 22nd of october so not in this cycle so this is not a straight up earnings play mr rocklops this is an interesting strike the 65 strike they were down there not too long ago they were below that they were trading 60 bucks even in july so that isn't exactly a home run of a strike to sell but they're getting Actually, they're not getting much juice for it at all. They're getting not even 12 cents. <laughs> so someone, Mr. Rock Lobster, seems like they're drawing a pretty aggressive line in the sand. They say, premium be damned. I would like to buy myself some cough if it gets below 65 cents. Is that your takeaway as well today, sir? It, it is, but I have to have I have to have my it can't be a show unless I have some sort of umbrage. When are we going to see the line in the sand fund? Or the line of the sand puts that you and I highlight. We have a lot of them in the to be watch. We could spend hours <laughs> reviewing the names we've highlighted. I try to I try to pepper them back in so they don't overwhelm us. But we do have many pages of names to review. If that floats your boat, I'll make sure we float a couple onto the next show. How's that? Okay, just you know because I because I am grumpy most of the time. But anyway. This is definitely a line of the sandy, you know, end of the week. Uh, vol was pumped because of, like we said before, you know, everything, selling everything last week. Um, uh, payment processors have been doing pretty well since everybody's shopping online. Um, and, you know, this looks like opening paper just because uh, the volume is so huge relative to the open interest. Um, and a week to go. I mean, that's kind of like line of the sand, you know. All right, they want to sell ten thousand puts. They want to take in their dime, you know, make their hundred thousand bucks and and call it a day. And, you know, maybe get some new upholstery for their Ferrari. So that's kind of like what I view this type of trade as. Would you like to add this one to your category of to be watched, sir? Yes, I think we should put it in. Um, I would I would guess that these puts go out worthless, but you know, that would be just a guess. Although the delta is only three, so I'm not taking a big leap of the guess. Does this float your boat a 12 cent put? Does that, does that get you excited? Um, <laughs> it doesn't, on, on the face of it as a trade, it's not very exciting. But if I'm a fund and I want to pick up some COF, that is a way to do it. Um, no, no doubt about that. So um, that it, is a, it is a way to pick up stock. And if they can't get it, you know, that is. You think of it, it's kind of like interest for four days. That's sort of how uh, they, I think, you know, a fund manager would look at that if they need to buy, you know, a million shares of COF. Uh, they're sitting there waiting around to buy it. They're having a hard time getting it for where they want. So they say, screw it. I'll just sell these puts and see if it sells off. So a a way to manage that position. So not, not a terrible use of... Uh, Timer dollars on that one. I guess getting paid about 12 cents is better than not getting paid 12 cents. It's working a 65 bid. So I'm down with that. When in doubt, get paid versus get paid nothing. All right, let's see out here. Moving on to our next name out here. We'll put this to appease the Rock Lobster. We'll put that last one in our to be watched. We have many to return to in that category, listeners. So maybe we'll do some uh, all review episodes coming up here just to appease the grumpy, the grumpy Bert. That is, that is the Rock Lops. He's no Ernie. He's definitely a Bert. Does he move on out to, let's see. Oh, this is a newcomer to the eye block. Here we go on out now. Our eye of Sauron has fixed its gaze 
upon Exalta Coding Systems. In case you're wondering, this is a coatings company. <laughs> Couldn't figure that one out. Uh, they make coatings for light and commercial vehicles. And this one is ticker symbol AXTA, A-X-T-A. I didn't remember this one if we had profiled it before. Uh, 24 and a quarter is where it's trading right now. Up a buck and buck 10. Up nearly 5%. So a decent little pop here for good old Exalta. A year ago, they were trading 31.35. So yet another one that was in the category of much higher a year ago. Oh, how the worm has turned in the year that is our Lord 2020. Uh, let's see. They kind of hovered in that range. I mean, it's a coatings company. I'm guessing you're not going to see a lot of ball or juice out here. They hovered in that high 20s, low 30s range until the madness popped off in mid-February. Then they sold off to $12.92. And then they began the long, slow, inexorable track all the way up to their near-term peak of $25.17. I don't even need to look at these charts anymore. I see these peaks. I know exactly when it is. Yes, June 8th yet again. Uh, 2517 there and it pretty much hasn't looked back since sold off down to the low 20s again and it's trying it's been trying to fight its way back it's a little closer today up a buck and change today so maybe a little bit of good news in the coding company even though it looks like uh, berkshire just dumped some shares of this bad boys i guess berkshire had some of this and they dumped it and then apparently <laughs> apparently that's enough to make the stock rally hey go figure maybe they maybe they were done with that buffett guy they didn't want that buffett guy holding their stock let him get rid of that. Apparently, Buffett likes himself some coatings, but not enough to not divest some of it out there of late. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found out here. Let's see. It was the Oc 25, so pretty much almost at the money calls right now, going up 3,800 times. These were opening on the Philly for City 5 cents, as the cool kids like to say. These were 35 cents at 65. I don't think anyone actually says that, but it sounds silly nonetheless. 35 cents at 65. They went up for 65 cents, so lifting the offer, kind of what you'd expect for a very light name like Axta Coding Systems. I should say Exalta Coding Systems. Again, this is opening on the Philly, but, you know, they weren't done there. Someone said, you know what? I really like these things. I want to come in and get another, oh, 11,000 and change. Total about 15,000 have traded these bad boys. On the day. That's a heck of a lot for a sleepy name like Exalta, a.k.a. Axta. Let's pull it up here right now and see what their ADV is. Uh, if I can type the tipper right, that would probably help. There we go. Let's see what their ADV is right now. They're at about 50, <laughs> they're at 52, almost 53 times their ADV out there right now, which is a whopping 634 contracts. So, yeah, just to get... 3,800 done in one print. I'm surprised they didn't have to go through that offer. That offer was good for 3,800, apparently, even though it was a pretty freaking wide market. So I guess that accounts for it as well. The stock was at about 2,360 when this print went up. So a little bit lower when this print started going up. They've been going up throughout the day, obviously bidding up some of this stock as well. So Mr. Rock Lobster, someone had to get themselves some Oct 25s in Exalta Coding Systems. Our print was about 4,000. Total of about 15,000 have traded on the day. There are earnings in this cycle. They are, let's see, they might be right on the cusp of it here. They are on, actually, no, they're right beyond it then because uh, expiration is on the 16th. These expire on the 22nd. So right beyond it. So this is not an earnings play, Mr. Rock Lobster. This is an earnings adjacent play. What do you think about someone had to get some calls here in Exalta Coding Systems. Very interesting trade. Like, um, kind of more along the, uh, uh, looking more along the lines of the post, you know, the post-COVID uh, rally. You know, um, I, maybe they're going to make the new code, the coding for the new uh, Nikola truck that's going to come out. Apparently, that is already pre-sold. The coolest looking uh, electric vehicle on the planet. Um, very, very interesting, huge. I think they're up to like 20,000 contracts right now. Is that the number you just saw? Let's see. 25,840 calls bought. Someone's got to um, get them. Volatility is up only six points, which I actually think is not even that much, to be honest. Uh, let's see. 44... You know, amazingly, yeah, you could, uh, that is a pretty expensive call relative. Um, you could probably do better just buying the 22 puts in stock. That vols about the same, um, and you could get the out of the money. You do a little 
little tricky strangle there or something like that, a little head straight. But um, it it looks they look kind of pumped up, and maybe maybe Buffett is buying more of it, but that's not quite what the news says. I was trying to look at like you know like a stock twits or something like that to see if they had anything on. Um, but a very interesting, um, very interesting uh, um, uh, flow. And then it's definitely people are I'm just looking at the stock twits. Yep. Oh, call activity by my mind. Interesting. Um, interesting about, you know, what they got. Maybe it's business related, but uh, you know, it's like anything like, you know, are those stocks going to get anywhere close to their June highs? And that would push the SPX into the stratosphere. Um, and it has not <laughs> happened yet, uh, as all my oil stocks languish in, in uh, a hellhole. So I'm all for uh, whoever are buying these calls and to see if kind of like a good old fashioned industrial company can go make some big dough again. Yeah, this one, the game is clearly afoot out here in Exalta today. So we're coming back to this bad boy uh, probably sooner rather than later because you're right. The narrative does not fit what's going on out here. The narrative is that Buffett is trimming this thing, and yet someone has to have it. This is like a name that trades 634 contracts a day, doing almost 25000 just on the call side today. So something is afoot out here in Exalta. Maybe you're right. Maybe Buffett is, is doing a little bit of the old, uh, the old uh, talking out of one side of his mouth and then trading on the other, gobbling up calls while he says he's trimming the stock. But either way, this is an interesting one. And so, certainly sounds like the, the party is not over here in Exalta. We'll be coming back to this bad boy. This last one, it is a shame. The greasiest of meatballs, the tastiest of briskets is not with us today because this is, I think, quite literally his favorite stock. We were just talking about this, joking about it on Ball Views on Friday. This is Darden Restaurants, his favorite chain, his favorite brand. Uh, they own a bunch of different names like, like the meatballs favorite, Olive Garden, and many others out here trading $90.10, sticker symbol DRI. This is the name that a year ago was trading $126.91. And it kind of hovered in that range until, you know what happened, February came along. And we got down to, so it went from 126.91 last year to when it sold off down to 26.50. It lost $100 net in the great nader out there. So obviously no one going out to eat, especially in all that madness of March. And then slowly a little bit of a rebound, 60 bucks, and then back down to 44 again. A few of those fits and starts until you know where it topped out. We don't even need to look. June 8th, 84.74, and then it kind of sold off again down to about 70 bucks even, and it's kind of slowly fought its way back. Now we're back a little bit north of that June 8th high, finally here at $90.18, just in the last few sessions. We've rallied past that. Apparently, people are dining out in Darden's again. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found. Mr. Rockobs, this is kind of a funky one. It looks like it has the whiff of a strangle. Let's see. Our Eye of Sauron found 2,700 of the Ock 85 puts going up for $3.90 right on the bid, as well as 2,700 of the Ock 95 calls going up for three sixty five dollars through the bid. These are going up over there on the Philly. Now, both of these prints are late, so we should probably read into these executions with a little bit of a grain of salt here. But still... The, and also, these did not go up marked as a spread, but they went up within a few seconds of each other. So if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, chances are it's probably a duck. Chances are these are related trades, and chances are it is indeed a strangle. Mr. Rock Lobster, what say you, sir? Are you in the strangle category? Who knows? Maybe this is what the meatball's been up to when he's not on the show. He's strangling his favorite name out there. What do you take? What's your take on this apparently 8595 October strangle here for $7.55 in Tartan restaurants. It it has all the whiff of a premium sale. I think just from, you know, the last week what week two weeks people are looking at uh VIX at 26 which is still zone 4 which is the highest uh which is the highest low of the danger zone. And they're looking at Dart. That's ten dollars worth of premium, so that gets you uh, like a one hundred five seventy five range. Uh, and they're taking that not too bad. Probably somebody that owns a stock and wants to just generate some juice against it, uh, thinking it's not going back to twenty dollars because people are are back to eating at the Olive Garden again. So um, I, I just I think that's probably what what the deal is on it uh just taking advantage of hey 
this is some pretty high vol and we're going to buy this stock and eventually people are kids will go back to school and parents will <laughs> be you know grabbing dinner at olive garden so it won't be the meatball that'll be eaten at olive garden but uh i think <laughs> the rest of the population will well, we're going to come back to this one as well. We're three for three, Mr. Rock Lobster, and names we have to come back to. I think the reason we haven't come back to a lot of them yet is because a lot of them are September expirations. So we like to wait to see until they're close or near or maybe beyond expirations. So we can see how the trades fared. But we'll come back to these ones, I think, a little bit sooner because there's three funky ones here today, including nice size, juicy strangle there in Darden Restaurant. Speaking of juicy, I'm sure Uncle Mike's got something juicy up his sleeve for us. So without further ado, let's head on into... The strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right. It's that time of the week, listeners. It's Monday. It's time for Uncle Mike to come on down from on high stone tablets and options, wisdom in hands. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. What do you have in store for us today? Rolling down put spreads to hedge an underlying timing. Oh, I'm sorry. So, that's it. We're done. I'm, I'm cutting you off. That's that's far too boring. No, I'm just kidding. That sounds like a good far answer. too boring. <laughs> oh, I mean, the, the, I, I don't see what can be more exciting in life, quite frankly. But um, what I wanted to go through today is that whenever you're using a put spread to hedge an underlying or to hedge a stock, uh, you have the sentiment that you're – you want to have some protection in place for the near term, but you're not necessarily concerned of doomsday, meaning the stock's going to go belly up or something along those lines. So with that, um, you have the opinion that, okay, if the stock does, if I'm using a vertical put spread, let's say the stock's trading at $55 a share and I buy the 52 half, 47 half put spread for maybe 50 cents a dollar, whatever the case may be. You're concerned with a more near-term pullback. You're concerned with the stock just going down maybe 10 or 20% in the near term, as opposed to the stock going belly up. You're not really worried about that because your school of thought is that the uh, the stock, if, it's, if you like it at 55, you love it at 45. That's kind of your opinion on the stock when doing something like this. And so by having a put spread, you're thinking, well, I like the stock, but I just want to have a little bit of protection in place in case it does go against me. So with that being said, I want to emphasize the importance of rolling put spreads when doing this strategy. Now, let's say the stock does go down and it goes down to $45 right away. Well, you do have one choice. Your one choice, or you have several choices, but you do have a choice in terms of do you roll the put spread uh, down or do you close it for a profit? What can you do with it? Well, typically in that situation, depending on the time frame, sometimes I like to get out of it and maybe roll down to say a 45 40 put spread or just say, you know what, it's already come down a little bit. I'm going to take the profits and then no matter what, if I do absolutely nothing, I'm ahead on this stock for the rest of my life because of the profits that I took on this put spread. Uh, of course, you have the ability to do more trades and become behind on it, but those are some choices with which you have. Now, when I'm in that situation, what I usually like to look at is, does it make sense to take the profit now? And I would say it depends on the time frame that you have for your long put spread. Meaning, if you have just a little bit of time till expiration, then at that stage, you've usually made close to the maximum profit you can make on the put spread. And if that's the case, then you might as well get out of it, I believe. Now, let's say it's maybe a three or four month put spread and you bought it for a dollar and maybe it's trading for a dollar 70 right now when it's totally in the money. Um, if that's the case, I'd consider leaving it. Because remember, your thought on this stock is that if you like the stock at 55, you love it at 45, I might even leave it and then just make it into more of a time decay type of trade. Now, with that being said, um, you, you have to understand that you have no more downside. But remember, you liked the stock at 55, but you love it at 45. So that's kind of the decision with which you need to make on what you would need to do when the stock does go against you, but you have that profitable put spread. Now, next thing I'm going to mention that I think is the more important side of things, and that is rolling up put spreads when the stock goes your way. 
So now let's say that this, you, you're in the same scenario, and now the stock is up at, say, $60 a share. That put spread that you had is at maybe, I don't know, a value of maybe $0.12, cents, let's say. Well, if that's the case, I think that what's really important is if you want to maintain a hedge in the stock, then you need to close out that uh, put spread that you have currently and roll it up to, say, a 60-55 put spread. Once again, I'm just making up numbers with it, but uh, this is kind of the concept behind uh, what I like to do with it. Now, if you really want to be a little bit more cautious, one thing you could do is maybe just close out the short side of the original put spread and then maybe keep the long side of it if it's worth like a, a nickel or something like that for a lottery ticket. But most of the time, I just close it out. So let's say the stock is up at the 60 level and you buy the 60, 55 put spread. Well, with that, now if the stock goes back down to where you originally got into it, over the long term of this, from where you got into it and where it is at the current time frame, what you've actually done is created money out of thin hair, basically, on a stock that's at the same spot where it was when you got into it. So I think it's important to make an adjustment when the stock goes against you. Don't get me wrong. But I contend that it's even more important to make an adjustment when the stock goes your way. Because let's say by doing this, you continue to do it and the stock goes to 60, 70, 80. At some point, usually there is a pullback. And if there is, a lot, if you can catch it just once, odds are you'll be at least break even on this or at least ahead a little bit when doing a hedging strategy when the stock is going up. And that's where it can get really exciting. So that is my two cents on rolling up put spreads when the stock goes your way. All right, everybody. Now let's keep on rolling into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody. Before we go around the block really quickly here, we got a, a hot new poll up there on the old at options you guys can follow it for yourselves make your voices heard like a bunch of you already have it went live right before the show did here it'll be live here for a few days here so you'll have a chance to get to it i think i believe to i'm sure it will be live through our thursday show so get out there out there on at options if you haven't already asking you uh, about a topic a lot of you have thoughts on <laughs> it's the old tesla it's been on a wild ride of late we've seen a number of quote-unquote interesting strikes come across our option scan of late remember those much ballyhooed 3,500 talked about not too long ago. That's just one of many. Uh, that raises the question, though. What do you guys think is the largest open position in Tesla right now? We ask you once again, honor system, no cheating, no pulling up on your brokerage platform. Use that gut. And we gave you four choices, as we are wont to do. We're nice enough. Multiple choice here. Uh, we gave you the Jan 500 call, Dece 350 put, June 750 call, and the January 1 put. Yes, 1.0. Put. <laughs> all of these strikes are equally absurd in their own way some more than others uh but uh, let's go around the horn and start with the rock lobster sir what do you think or what is your vote if you have one a and b what do you think our audience is voting for interesting question i think uh i think the audience said the june 750 call uh but i would say uh the january 500 is the most popular interesting mr uncle mike same question for you sir the D's put, I'm going with that one for myself as well as the audience. The 350 put, you said, correct? D's 350 put, I did say that, yes. And it is an interesting one. Uh, people have been voting hot and heavy over here. Your buddy there, Mr. Lincoln, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, he's already chimed in. Uh, Mr. Infamous Short Ball Show, he said he, did, he played in our poll. He said he just looked it up and he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no spoilers. At least he didn't he didn't share out the right answer with our audience. No spoilers yet. If you look it up, don't share any spoilers. Listen, I won't give my answer because I know the right answer. Uh, but right now, our audience is clearly feeling the upside love to the tune of almost 60 percent, 59.7 percent of the Jan 500 calls. A lot of love for those followed by number two. June 750s, 19.4%. Then in the tie at 10.4% each for number three, we got the D350 put and the Jan 1 put. So that's going to go for another day or two out here. So get your votes heard. Get them in if you haven't already. We'll reveal the winner 
on Thursday's option block. But now let's go around the horn. Let's see what everyone's watching outside of the hot Tesla <laughs> positions out there. Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you, sir. What do you have your eye on for the rest of the week until we gather here together on Thursday? Well, I want to see if we can get a little bit of a follow through today because we pulled back last week and then we have the 3,400 mark that we're at right now. I uh, want to see if we can make a run for the 3,500 mark on the S&P. So just kind of watching uh, the specific numbers on the S&P at this point in terms of news. Uh, one day it's great. One day it's bad. We're kind of in that type of market. But uh, I'm liking to I'm, I'm focusing on the numbers. Someone just sent in a fun GIF. <laughs> for our poll of uh, Bugs Bunny and Davy Duck fighting over an up and down arrow that's attached to a tree. And uh, they're flipping it back up and down. And apparently he, he says that's what Tesla options trading is. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. There is a little bit of that out there. Mr. Rocklops, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until we gather here together on Thursday? Um, I like to see just getting touching that low area in VIX again. Um, to, if we got if, if we if we do have some follow through out of all this action, um, so I think the better the COVID news gets, I think that's in general S and P five hundred up, and all the stocks that have participated go with it. Um, the election though will keep that funky volatility high, so those are the two things I'm looking at because the right hand is not quite talking with the left hand on this. It does not appear to be at all, sir. You are correct. Unfortunately, that music means we've come to the end, at least, of this program, but not of our network broadcast day. Nay, I say to you, listeners. So if you want a little bit more in your ear holes, got you covered. We'll be back with the Crypto Rundown in about exactly an hour, talking all things crypto, fun, and joy out there. It's been a little bit since we had that show on. Of course, we were off last week for the holiday, so it'll be fun to get back in out there. If you're listening live, you get some fun stuff beamed in between. And, of course, you're listening after the fact, like many of you are then by all means just hit next on your device of choice of course we'll have a lot of interviews coming at you tomorrow a lot of other shows popping off got wednesday education wednesday back in full effect boot camp opr and we'll back again on thursday for more fun stuff with twifo and the old ob and if you want to learn more from each of our cohorts here about what the heck they have that may interest you let's start with the uncle of mike so it's uncle mike sir what is cooking in the land of saint charles well, if you are interested in working with a financial advisor who is uh, not afraid of the option product and uh, wishes he could have a specific put option on COVID, um, feel free to contact me, 630-885-0017, or check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. There you go, stcharleswealth.com. You two can call him up and talk about specific COVID puts or anything else that floats your boat. And Mr. Rock Lops, same question for you, sir. If folks are intrigued, they want to join the Legion or the Pit Chat or any other fun stuff you guys have cooking over there. Where should they go? What should they do? Oh, yeah. Come on over to optionpit.com. Um, go into our memberships area. Also, there'll be we'll have a new kind of a new cool uh, product coming out. So lots of stuff going on. But yes, if you want the Legion, you want hopefully one of these days we'll have fancy hats and T-shirts. Um, and that's where you know, put your learning on. You want to Again, we're learning the, the practice of trading an option pit using volatility to help you become a better investor. That's what we do. We've been doing it for 10 years, and hopefully we'll be doing it for another 10 and another 10 because I like hanging out in Maine and just not having to work very hard. So please come <laughs> and uh, learn how to trade options. For Keep him in his very highfalutin Maine isolated lifestyle. Remember, he was social distancing before it was cool. Head on over to optionpit.com. You can ask him why for yourself. Keep him in that social isolation lifestyle for another week. And on behalf of the Rockingest of Lobsters and the Unclest of Mikes and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, for streaming, for subscribing, for listening live, for all the other fun stuff that you guys do. Keep the questions coming, voting in our polls, all that good stuff. And we'll see you back again on Thursday for more of the Option Block. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 